This morning I want to speak about the renaissance of the physical. Sounds weird, but I, I will explain it. So I think we all have this kind of, we all see this renaissance of the physical, the renaissance of the communication in the real space as a reaction onto now 20 years of communication in the virtual uh, space of the internet. And as a media designer, I'm allowed to talk about that. Um, I think you all have observed this increasing amount of exhibitions and museums which had been open over the last three to five years. We observe an increasing number of visitors in museums worldwide and it's really significantly increasing. Uh, and we don't only see this in the cultural field, we also see this in the corporate field. So a lot of corporates, they're shifting their communication budget from traditional media like print, like broadcast, and they also consider the internet as a traditional medium onto the communication in the real space. So it seems that we have a desire now to leave from time to time the computer and the monitor and go into a museum or go into any kind of narrative space to experience information and entertainment together with other people. So if we are looking onto the design of these narrative spaces, then we see a huge difference compared to the pre-digital times. So the visitors of these narrative spaces, they are now computer literate. They know exactly about the qualities of this new medium of the computer, like interactivity, like networking, like collaboration, and they want to see this also in narrative physical spaces. And this is what Artcom is doing beside other things for the last 23 years. So for instance, making installations like huge multi-touch installations, interactive floors, huge interactive spaces, interactive media stages or uh, art in public space based on media. Um, out of time reasons, I can't go in all to these different types of uh, installations, media-based installations in space. Instead of that, I want to focus on a development which we are uh, focusing on in the last five years. So up to now, when we designed objects in space, media-based objects in space, we usually used monitors, we used LEDs, we use projections. So a lot of this kind of virtual uh, uh, things. And now, since some years, we are focusing very deeply onto the physical stuff. So we are designing physical media-based installation in space. So we don't use any LEDs, no monitors, no projections anymore. Uh, we use it, but we are focusing on the other worlds. Um, and so I want to show you some of these projects which we did over the last uh, five years. So the big breakthrough in this kind of computationally driven media installations, physical media installations, uh, was an installation we did for the BMW Museum in, in Munich. Uh, it was opened in 2008 and we did a lot of installations there, but also very traditional kind of LED-based, projection-based interactive installation. But we did our first uh, purely physical installation based on mechatronics, based on code, and based on electronics. Uh, the installation I want to show is uh, the installation which we did for the first space in the museum. Uh, it's a very interesting space because it's dedicated to the car design. So usually if you are 
<clears throat> if you are designing a space for car design, you show talking heads and monitors, you show pictures of tape drawing designers, and we decided to do a completely different thing because it's the very first space of the museum, so you have to more or less set a kind of interesting tone for the museum. So we decided to design a floating surface in space which, with which we can perform the process of a car design. Unfortunately, we have gravity, so there, there is no floating, no material which we can use to make a floating surface in space. So we made a lot of experiments. How can we uh, design a hovering installation, a hovering uh, surface in space? And you see we used different kind of nets. We used uh, leeches. We even used fabric on ropes and uh, tried to deform it. The contrast is a little bit higher. I think you want to change it. Uh, but at the end, we came up with spheres, hanging spheres on ropes and they are hovering in space. And with this, uh, the idea was to design a, a narrative uh, communicating the, the car design, the process of car design. So this is what we showed uh, BMW. And first they said, uh, I think that's not, uh, we think that's not appropriate to, so, uh, to show our design process with metal balls. But then, we made a test setup, and I think that's always the best way to convince a client to make a test setup in, if you're working in this physical, computational world. And then they figured out that there are all the brand values in there. So it's dynamic, it's precise, it's challenging. And for us as uh, designers, it was very helpful having this to learn about how can we create a narrative out of, uh, with this kind of uh, installation. So the narrative was quite simple. The storyline at the beginning of a design process, you don't have any idea. You have kind of random white noise. Then over time, the first forms appears, probably al already directing onto the final result. And then competing forms appears, alternatives, and at the end, there's the car. So this is now a two-minute compilation out of uh, eight-minute choreography in which we showed the process of the design of five different important cars of uh, BMW history.
short look behind the scene, making off. So usually we are doing the prototypes, the concept, the software, uh, but then we give it out to a workshop because you don't want to do things like that in-house and also not like that. Uh, then the story development, so we had light, we had sound, uh, even we had uh, spoken text. Content production, we developed a specific kind of uh, computational process to uh, design ho the whole thing. A lot of uh, test setups. This was a very bad situation uh, three weeks before the opening. We had a software bug, so uh, usually every of these ropes or of these spheres get a, um, uh, get a value, let's say 50 centimeter down, but then we had a flip of the signs and instead of getting the instruction to go 50 or 100 centimeter down, it went up and destroyed the installation three weeks before the opening completely. So, and, and you know, if you work in physical space, there's no undo. So you have to do it by yourself. Okay, but, but then uh, we were lucky enough to have a good opening. Uh, <clears throat> so the next installation is a project we did. Uh, so so the, the car was done in 2008. This was 2010 for the Expo 2010 in Shanghai. And we got a very nice commission for the pavilion of the disabled. And uh, it was totally clear for us that the whole Expo will be filled with LEDs, with projections, immersive projections. And it will be a completely retina massage. So we decided to do something very quiet and very poetic. And because it's for the uh, Pavilion of the Disabled and because it's sponsored by a prosthesis manufacturer, Otto Bock, which is also in Berlin here, um, we decided to uh, go back to a very old idea of communication, having this mirror reflecting sunlight over long distance. We then asked uh, the prosthesis producer for a hundred of hand prostheses, painted them white, put mirrors into it, uh, used motors on the rear, uh, used a strong beam, and uh, designed a computationally driven uh, choreography, again, which reflects this light on the other side of the wall and creating from time to time the uh, Chinese character for movement or handling. So this tested up. And you see the, the projector is as interesting as the projection. And the reflections on the other side, which is then driven by a computational algorithm. So very simply done and sketched in, in processing. So this is now set up in Shanghai. So that's installation there. So we didn't put the flowers there, so only the right thing is from us. So this swarm behavior, having a kind of very calm uh, motion there in, in, in this Expo 2010. So it's only one beam, 100 prosthesis. Okay, coming to the last project. Uh, this is a project which just recently opened. Uh, it's for the Deutsche Bank in 
their headquarters in Frankfurt. Uh, we made several installations for the brand space. Uh, as you probably know, they renovated their, their headquarter in Frankfurt. And beside others, we did, again, um, kinetic installation. Uh, and I'm a 40 kinetic installation, so from a certain point of view, you see the, uh, you see the Deutsche Bank logo. Fortunately, the contrast is a little bit high, but probably you can imagine. So we divided the diagonal beam of the Deutsche Bank logo into 48 triangles. And from a certain point of uh, the space, you then see the logo as it is. And we then designed a choreography for these uh, hovering triangles. We had four elements to choreograph. We had the uh, vertical movements of the triangles. We had a light choreography, which cast uh, nice shadows. And we also uh, designed a projection onto the triangles, which, is, which had been extremely difficult because you have these moving triangles in space and you have to uh, hit them directly without any kind of uh, beams going over them. So this was quite a challenge and again making, uh, made a, a dramaturgy, a, a choreography. And here a uh, two minute compilation again from a nine, well, now in the meantime it's 12 minutes choreography. So here you can see the projections under the triangles. I recommend to visit our website and have a close look to it. Uh, it was very difficult to mask them and to hit them directly. And you see the computational graphics which are reacting onto the uh, positions of the triangle too. So this is one of uh, three of these installations standing there. The other two, they're really going more into content of the Deutsche Bank and to the brands. Um, because I have another three minutes, I show you the fourth one we did for them. Uh, it's a mirror. So they, they had the problem that they didn't have anything for the entrance area. So we designed uh, an amorphotic mirror which is where, where the, the surface is, uh, is, is designed the way that if uh, we have also a blue light going on the other side. So if you're going up the stairs, you see then the Deutsche Bank logo in it. So it's more or less without motors. So by walking by yourself, you're creating this animation. So coming up the stairs, you don't see anything uh, beside this kind of blue reflections. And then if you are coming up, you see the Deutsche Bank logo in the mirror. Okay, 
this is it uh, at the end a little bit of self-promotion uh, being now in with, uh, with Artcom for 23 years we only communicated up to now in the internet about ourselves but speaking about the physical we achieved now to design a book so in two weeks time beginning of September our book will be out it's published by Gestalten Verlag and if you want to see more of our projects 45 of them are deeply described in this book and I hope you will buy it. Okay, thank you. Thank <laughs> you.